So anyway, I told them yesterday, I'm going to be speaking on when can we say a person has become a man. We've been talking of Holy Ghost programming. That's part of what we got this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and then verse 11 particularly. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11. This is not going to be a long teaching. It's just going to be a point by point um, what you measure yourself with. It will help women not to marry a boy and to help men to know what to measure yourself with to say you're a man. Both spiritually and physically. Secularly. Manhood is not muscularity. It goes beyond being muscular. When you look at the perfect definition of manhood is Christ-likeness. All right? So let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But, everybody say but. When I became a man. So becoming a man is a becoming, is a process. You are not born a man, you become a man. I put away childish things. When? It's, there's a time. There's a yardstick. There's something that tells you that this person is a man. Now, everybody's praying that their children, especially boys, become men. And there's nothing that gives you that joy, that sense of confidence that this boy is now a man. Amen. It's not that you are tall. When we were in secondary school, Years ago, we thought manhood was having a beard. And when our beards were not growing out on time, we accelerated it with methylated spirit. And he put it there. Praise God. And we found that I still did not make us men. You are you're still a boy with a beard. I want to make you to see what is the yardstick number one. when you begin to put away childish things childish behaviors amen and the first childish behavior that everybody must put away to start the journey into manhood is to put away irresponsibility When do you say somebody has become a man? Not a particular age. When he begins to accept, embrace, and hold himself accountable for responsibility. Responsibility. Are you following what I'm saying? Many, many years ago, I called one of my nephews. I wanted to speak to the mother. The father is not at home. So I wanted to speak to the mother and just kick the call. I said, where's your mom? He said, mom is somewhere. I said, now, okay, go and call your, go and call your mom. mom. I need to speak to your mother. He said, okay, yes, uncle. And he left. The phone is put there. He didn't place the phone back to run to call the mother. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting 5 10 15 20 30 minutes in the same house so after some time i got fed up i put the phone back and then later i got across the mother and what happened on the way to call the mother he found some of his colleagues playing and he joined them and forgot the assignment I sent him. I wasn't angry. He's a boy. Amen. 
in John chapter 21. Now, I'll just give you a little bit today so you can understand that. And this is not a nice message, but a right message. It will be brutal on the flesh of everybody because you could actually be a grandfather and a child. John chapter 21. Verse 1, after this thing, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise, he showed he himself this, in this manner. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. They did it overnight. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the seashore. But disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. Now look at this language. At this time, because Jesus had just died, at the time that Jesus started, it means he was 30 physically. He did a ministry for, 30, for three and a half years. So this is just 33 and a half years. Old Jesus, physically in the flesh. Peter was older than him physically. The only one that was younger than him really physically was John the Beloved. His younger brother, half-brother James and um, Jude, they were not part of his disciples. So how would Jesus now call them children? Because they had left the instruction he gave them. Not different from my nephew that time. He gave them instruction when he was going. And Peter said, I go a fishing. What was the instruction he gave them? You remember in Matthew 20, go into all the world. And preach. But before they said, Go and tarry, wait for me in Jerusalem until you endure with power from on high. That was the instruction he gave them. But they left it to go out fishing. So they were not men at this time. They were children. And he said, Children, call them. When you call an adult a child, it's because it lacks purpose. Children don't have a sense of purpose driving them it is a sense of enjoyment that drives children a sense of fun little children think life is a joke so if, if that's how you view life you never take things serious that is to be taken serious then you're a child so he said, when, when I became a man, I put away childish things. Not one thing, many childish things. He didn't say childlike. Childlike is always a positive description of the Bible. There are certain things that a child does trust. Sincerity, openness. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 14, Paul saying that in, child, in malice be children. You know one thing that children don't keep malice? They fight with each other and beat each other to nonsense. And then the next day they are sharing food among themselves. Adults just offend each other and that offense can, offense can last three generations. And children are wondering why. Don't greet so and so again. No. Ah. But as my school friend, I said don't go to their house again. Ah. Why? If you greet him, don't come back home. I'm, how many of you know what I'm talking about? So children, that, that childlike behavior, God doesn't want us to lose it. But he doesn't want us to have childish behaviors. So when Bible uses childish, it's wrong. It's the negative behavior. But when he uses childlike, it's positive. So we know the difference between childish and childlike. In the course of this teaching, Amen. So, first thing is to begin to identify childish things that should be put away. Irresponsibility 
will capture everything, not accepting ownership of your decisions, not accepting ownership of your assignment of instructions and whatever is a childish thing. You know, children also like to transfer blame. A simple story will put an end to many civil wars. Hey, I'm sorry, but let me explain. Why don't you just say I'm sorry? And that ends the matter. Whether it's the man or the woman. And when you see two children that are married, there's a lot of sparks that always fly. I hope you're following what I'm saying. When pastors are counseling a couple over and over and over again, either both of them are children or one of them is a child who refuses to let go of childish things. So that marriage will be having all kinds of problems. And when children begin to grow up and find their parents quarreling like little children, the quarrels that they don't quarrel, when they find it happening, they wonder what's going on here. Praise God. So when, when he has put away childish things, each of these points that I want to put up, I'm giving you here, I have about 20 something points or whatever, uh, I could teach a service on each of them. But because of the nature of my style of ministry, I, wouldn't, I don't know the next time that God will bring me back to it. Is that okay? So I'll give you at least um, maybe 10 points today. So some I will explain, some I won't explain. So first point is put away childish things. There are things that I used to do that I used to enjoy that I put away. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There comes a time that the box stops here. Are you following what I'm saying? As long as you find somebody to transfer the consequence of failure non-performance or responsibility to you are not yet a man in that field are you following what i'm saying praise god i tell for example i tell our pastors i always know the pastors among our pastors that have become men in ministry are you following what i'm saying our pastors that have become men in ministry, they don't give me any extra work to do. When I go to their churches, I am free to do apostolic work. When I go to some churches, I have to do pastoral work. Now, I'm dealing with a pastor that has not become a man. Because the sense is, it is daddy's work, not my own work. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. And of course, I'm not going to let anything go wrong is that okay uh, i remember when i was at leisure years ago i was living in a particular house my landlord that time was based in lagos and then he comes occasionally and he never meets his house wrongly managed one day he had told his caretaker that he's coming to increase my rent because i was the, of all his tenants in different parts of the country he has many houses i was one paying the least amount and he had told him come to come to increase the rent. So when he came, and um, mommy met him, greeted them and all that, and things like that. Told the story before, gave, served them cold um, watermelon and uh, whatever. And I came back, and man just said, you know, I like the way you take care of my house. And all that. Money is not everything. He didn't increase the rent. And then after the man, and he prayed for me. He said, it is from this my house, you will go to your own. And his wife also said, I know what happened. Okay, because I took care of his house like it was my own. I didn't take care of it like a tenant. And then when I moved to my own house, because my house, I built the house down the road from his own place. And then um, I left some brothers there to continue living there. It's free accommodation for them. And when the children came to check, because they come occasionally, the first time they came, they said, that is not here anymore. And they say, hi. Ah, he said, this is not the way daddy lives here. They asked, they were saved. I, they knew I was not there anymore. They told them that daddy is not here anymore. They could see the difference in the way their father's house was kept. Are you following what I'm saying? I was living in another estate in Leisha before I moved to that one. And this one was a bigger estate with many houses there. And the houses, they are not well maintained. The owner is a very big multi-millionaire was at Badon that time. And um, 
he didn't take care of the estate. He has a doctrine that is wrong. He said he doesn't believe in taking care of houses for tenants. Now, that doctrine, he, maybe he, he expects the tenant to take care of the house. I know sometimes landlord and tenant battles are always strained battles. Okay? It's a symbiotic relationship. But he has this doctrine. If I built a house, I expect to take care of it. If he didn't build the house, you won't have a place to live. So one day I had a chat with him. I just went to his... He has a big mansion in the compass. So I went to talk to him. And when I finished talking, he said, I, I, you know, if, 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 the way I spoke to him, he said, I never knew I have a, a, a tenant among my tenants that speaks sensibly like this. I said, my father built houses before he died. <laughs> now, it was, it was taught that way I was talking. I said, there's not a way to, to, to keep this house. It's not going to last for so long like this. And he was touched. I, I mean, you cannot build this, 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 this house is, this place is massive and everything. So I was just thinking like that. And then, so the same way, when, when you become a man, you can be trusted with things. When you don't trust a child with things, um, a child always has somebody that can, he can transfer the duty to. You can be a staff that is not a man. If you are a staff that is a man, your boss can leave the work in your hand. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. Uh, uh, during my uh, industrial attachment years ago, I did my industrial attachment at um, National Control Center for Nepal here in Oshobo. And um, myself and a colleague were there. And there was a Portuguese man that was working there at that time, plus another Nigerian man, engineer. And then the, 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 the engineer, the Christ, the engineer, the senior engineer was a Christian and knew I was a Christian. And he trusted the two of us so strongly. And uh, in fact, if he gave us any job to do, he doesn't check what I do. And uh, I learned the, the danger of trust from that man. Okay? And um, he was one that taught me, he said, don't let a superior person correct you twice on, a, on an issue. He said it's a bad sign. And so I never forgot that. That when you're dealing with a superior, if you correct you twice on the same subject, you start raking negative marks in the in record. So uh, nobody correct me twice. And so he, I, we, we did something for him. He had to go to Abuja to the federal minister to present something to him. And because I was the one that did it with my colleague, he just didn't check. I mean, anything that we did, he knows that will be thorough. And just do. And that occasion, I can't, I, I think my friend did something and, okay, you've done your pass and everything. So I just packed it and gave it to him. And it was when he was standing before the minister that I found out there was some critical mistake. It could have cost him his job. But he knew what to do. And then he did, he did it. And he came back and then told me, I felt so bad and so ashamed. I said, I'm sorry. He said, it's okay. That's part of the blessing of life. But then I understood the power of trust that if, if I gave it to him, he just expected to be right. He puts a burden on my emotions. And it is men that accept that burden on their emotions. Children don't want it. Are you following what I'm saying? That's the difference between a mother and a house girl over the same child. The child can be not can do but my bad my belly to my mate love you. Shut up. Things like that. I hope you follow what I'm saying. And um, so I, I, I see that, and that's point number one. These childish things we must put it aside. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You know, sometimes you find that in a home, the mother is the man, the father is a child. There are three pieces of meat on the table, and there is the father, the mother, and five children. And the mother takes two and gives the husband, the head of the family, and takes one and cut it to five for the children. And say, no problem, you eat. I, I manage myself. I mean, she hadn't eaten, but they told them that she has eaten. She's really the man at home. Sometimes, I've seen fam families that the mother-in-law, mother of the husband, came to visit them. And then she, the husband is there, and then she's nursing two children. 
and she's running the mother-in-law is sitting down because the mother-in-law is the queen in her son's house she had not been treated well in her husband's house and she's waiting for the time that she will be a queen are you following me? so the husband that married the daughter that married the husband the, the son when she comes to their house she will sit down titi can get me some food the husband said titi my food and the children say mommy my food and she's nursing three children you know what i'm talking about she's not complaining she's responding to the mother-in-law she's responding to the husband and she's responding to the children some of you may know that kind of man that i'm talking about in your house you know what i'm talking about huh it is childish you know what you know you know when the baby is born and the baby is crying the night and the husband just packs his material from the room and goes to another room i need to focus for tomorrow and then the wife in fact mommy said that the, the, the smell is not too nice and things like you know what i'm talking about praise god as if they didn't produce the baby together now it's a quiet sunday today don't worry it's not going to be a long service amen i i, I told you it's not going to be a nice message but the right message okay that she's giving up her own privileges one of the childish things that people must give up is my rights and privileges for other people to move on you understand and um, so paul said when i became a man i put away i dealt with it i drop it if you are going to become a man you have to start putting away childish things you have to start doing it you are not a man if your wife is working and you are not working and you are confidently eating food that you do not put money down for who said huh <laughs> you are the one that said huh <laughs> now that's it that's the serious one are you feel i'm saying I, I remember we were we, we did them um, i was going to do uh, believers conference at Ife years ago and we used them um, was the mafia hotel for the ministers meeting we gathered all the ministers and christian elders in town to come to a luncheon and we served them pounded yam and a goosey everybody ate and then i addressed the people this is the vision and everything and all that we wanted them to join us to hold the meeting and all that and after the meeting three men came up to speak to me professor kende professor Ayemi, dr shueto and they met and they said we have had you we have been touched by the vision but somebody paid for this food that we ate is there any way that we can contribute to it and you see my respect for those men shot through the roof because when we came to hold the same thing at Oshobo here years ago and then we sat down we used to have no hotel that time we didn't have church and holding meetings around and then there were three men that were coming in they didn't know where where we sat the high table is back in the corridor where they're coming and i was hearing them talk they were joking among themselves and say what you guys will feel why you and things like that so i i had that say who are the people that so i saw the three of them i took note of them and when they came in i saw the three of them I decided I enjoy the food and things like that. Okay? And throughout all the, all the while, I never, I just looked at them, I just kept quiet. I watch our ministries over the years and see what God is doing and all that. Now I'm not so, because success is never an accident. And failure is not a mistake or an accident. I hope you understand that. So I saw that, that um, those three men at Ife, these were men amongst men that will never eat free food. If you see two friends 
go to a restaurant and the first person that spontaneously pay is the man. The one that is hoping the other person pays is the child. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with maturity. It has to do with putting away child. Children always are looking for free things. Children always are concerned with their comfort. They are never going to give it up for anybody. If a baby is hungry now, the baby will be crying if the mother is in the auditorium, not minding that the mother is listening to the message. Ha, 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 ha. And when the mother carries the baby and put breast in my and the baby smile and fall asleep. And they wake up three hours later. Yeah! That's a child. There is, is not a sin to be a child, but it is a sin for a child to be pretending to be a man. It's not a sin to be a child. There are certain things and certain roles in life that children should not aspire to. Marriage is one of them. Leadership is one of them. Are you following what I'm saying? Part of the problem of Africa is what the book of Ecclesiastes says. It says, cost is the land that the kings are children, that they eat in the morning. But blessed is the land that the king is a son of nobles, well trained and well brought up. Are you following what I'm saying? I was teaching the staff one day and I said to them, the, the king of Babylon, when they wanted to select people that would come to the king, to the presence of the king, he said the first quality is that they should be children of the king. They were slaves. But he said, choose among the children of Israel, those that are from the king's household or born of nobility. And I said, do you know why? This king said that because he doesn't know them, he didn't ask the school they went to, he's saying something that in Yoruba land we know. If you come from a particular family, they expect a basic home training that if you are born of royalty and blue blood, more blood of fear, and it is on top of that foundation that education can work. Because there are too many educated rebels educated i don't know what other word that english language can cap that has wrecked africa are you following what i'm saying i mean i passed out a young man years ago at Alicia that the father died and suddenly one day he inherited a whole building with tenants inside that was what the father put in the will. And he went to the house. And the people didn't, they greeted him in a way he didn't like. And he gave them quick notice instantly. That is a child. His father didn't treat his tenants like that. He just inherited what he didn't work for. So when do we say that somebody has become a man? When he has, when he's able to put away childish things. The more you put away childish things, childish thoughts, childish practices, childish behaviors, childish appetites, then you are becoming a man. Praise God. Number two. Now, I can stay with each point, but let me just run through ten for you today. When he is able to do the things of an adult easily, be trusted with responsibility and leave it in his hand, he will get it done. Take responsibility. You, you, in John 21, Jesus called them children because they have left the instruction he gave them. They didn't continue in it. They went out fishing. A child is not able to separate his comfort from his purpose. Are you following what I'm saying? It's a child that is going to Lagos and get to Ibano and see another friend and change the, 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 the journey. They can't continue on something until it is finished. Stay on one spot, stay on one spot, stay on one spot, stay on one spot. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. Many years ago, during the, during, during the fuel crisis, there are many fuel crises that have come, but this one was a very terrible one at that time. And a brother, a minister in Ibadan called me to come and preach for him. I was driving from Malaysia. And I got there because one of the things that I don't, I don't believe, I'm, if I'm come to preach at 5 o'clock, I'll get there maybe 2, 3, and then take time to get prepared for the meeting and all that. So we got to this church around some minutes to five. Okay? And I found the church was locked. Ah. At to five. This is a conference. Day one. 
And so I traced the pastor to his house. And I met the pastor in a wrestling match with a bowl of amala. <laughs> to five, when the advertisement is five. A man of God, you have come. I said, I have come and I'm going back. <laughs> what? I took, I turned back to Lisha. That was the last time I prayed for him. I don't waste my time. God called me. I left my certificate. I didn't leave my certificate for seriousness. I can, no wonder, no, none of his members came at that time. Because he's, he's at home at to five. I mean, the way he was, he was wrestling with that man, like, you know, he's not planning to come in the next one hour. And most likely, some of his members are fasting. Now, listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm saying something very important. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what Bible exercises. The, a land that the king is a child is cursed. He eats with two hands. All kind of things like that. Are you following what I'm saying? Africa needs leaders that will use the resources of Africa to develop Africa. Are you following what I'm saying? There is crisis in the Nigeria Republic today, and they tell us one in every five light bulbs in Nigeria in, in France is lighted by uranium from France. I'm from Niger. All right. Why would they do that for us? Are you following? When 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 mobile phone first came to to Nigeria, some of us we bought SIM card at thirteen thousand. That is supposed to be given free. Because our leaders made money from it. At our expense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Praise God. Childishness is a cause in leadership. And it has nothing to do with age. It has to do with what are you willing to let go. And what are you willing to embrace. Responsibility.